Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to share with you my five best tips for frugal moms. I share a lot of tips about how we live our life on a budget here on my channel, but today I thought I would share tips just related to spending money on our kids. Now I know there's a ton of studies out there and we hear all the time about how much money it takes to raise kids. And kids are expensive, but there's a lot of things we can do to lower those day-to-day -day costs. And I want to share my five favorite with you today. My first tip is to pack snacks and or lunches whenever you go out and about. I think it's pretty universal that as soon as you get your kids in the car and you're out for about a half an hour, they start saying that they're hungry or they need something to drink. And so if we are going out for longer than about an hour, I always make sure to pack snacks. If we are going out somewhere for the day, like the park or the zoo or even the swimming pool, I always make sure to pack our lunch. Whenever your kids want things from the concession stand or drive-throughs or even the checkout line at Walmart, they want a grab-and-go snack, it can add up. And we don't eat out a lot, and so when we eat out, I want that to be kind of something they look forward to, not something that we did just because they were hungry when we were out running errands. We also do this same thing whenever we are going out to the park, when we're going to the pool or the zoo for the day. Rather than spend money on concession stand food, I pack our lunch. Pretty much pack our lunch wherever we're going. Even if we are going um, to a sporting event, I always have a cooler full of peanut butter and jellies or you know salami sandwiches. I know my kids are gonna eat it and it is way less expensive to pack lunch than it is to buy something out. Tip number two is to buy secondhand when you can. Today, you don't have to go scour Goodwill and spend hours to buy secondhand clothing for your kids. Flea market sites and Facebook make it so easy to go ahead and purchase things like sports equipment and clothing and toys for your kids used at a discounted price. Last Christmas, we even bought a Christmas gift off of Craigslist. It was new in box. It was half the price of what they were charging for the same item on Amazon, and it can save you a lot of money. We don't have any great consignment sales or consignment stores in my area, but I know that a lot of areas do. So look in the spring and the winter for the times when the consignment sales are going on. A lot of moms are looking to get rid of their kids' things at a super discounted price. We also buy sports equipment secondhand. Um, we kind of trade off and really never exchange money for my kids' dirt biking equipment in a lot of instances. We will give boots that are outgrown from one of our kids to another rider and a rider that's older than us passes down gear to my boys. If you are in any type of league or you're seeing the same people at games or races, you can definitely do this for your kids as well. So definitely buying things secondhand helps cut down on cost. Number three is find cheap and free fun. Now years ago whenever our kids were I would say preschool age we spent a big portion of our budget on weekend fun activities. Now I would much rather spend my budget on weekend fun than I would another plastic toy but it still eats up a lot of money. And you can find some really great ways to have fun cheap or free in your area. Check libraries, churches, and community centers to see what type of events they're holding. Um, we always, like I've told you guys before in some of my budget videos, wait for free days at the museums and the parks. Get discounted sporting tickets from friends and family members. And I use Groupon a ton. Our whole entire family just went laser to play laser tag and the kids each got a $5 game card and we only paid $17 for an entire afternoon out. I packed snacks for the ride home so they weren't begging for a treat when we were at the laser tag place and we had a great day out for 17 bucks. So you really can find cheaper free things to do with your family. We also make our own fun at home. We invite other families over for a game night or my kids favorite it is we camp out in the living room. It's so much fun and I know it's gonna have lasting memories for our kids. Tip number four is set spending expectations for your kids. Now my husband and I do not want to put unnecessary adult burden on our kids in regard to finances, but we do clue them in on the fact that we live on a budget and certain things are gonna be outside of what we're able to afford. So when they're asking for things for their birthday and Christmas, we definitely say no to anything that doesn't fit within our budget so we don't give them false hope or you know an expectation that it is something that they could possibly get. We also set spending expectations when we go out for the day, when we go to Target, and when we're at the grocery store. 
I normally tell the kids that they are allowed to pick one item when we go to the grocery store, a special cereal or you know a special breakfast item. Normally they're not grocery shopping with me during the school year. Like I said, we do the same thing whenever we're going to Target. If they ask, can I get something at Target, we number one ask them if they have their own money because if they do, we let them spend that however they please. But if we have decided not to spend any money or buy any toy, which is normally the case, we let them know, nope, we won't be getting anything today. And you'll see if you start to institute this whenever they're you know, three, four, and are able to understand, they just pretty much quit asking if they don't have their own money. If they hear, not unless you have your own money so many times, they catch on and we really have never had to deal with too much of the gimmies when we are out at store. Tip number five is don't sign them up for every single thing under the sun. We love our kids being involved in extracurricular activities. My boys both do parkour. One is currently doing flag football and the other rides dirt bikes, um, but we do not let them sign up for every single thing. Every day, and I'm not even joking, from our school district comes home forms for races, 5Ks, special events, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, well not Girl Scouts in my kid's case, but Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, basketball, football, wrestling, chess club, all types of things. There are hundreds of activities out there that your kids could be involved in, but you can't overdo it. It's going to stress you out. It's going to strain your budget and it's going to normally what I found is make your kids not super happy. I found limiting our kids to just two activities at a time allows them to really invest in that activity and see if the following season it's something they want to do again. If they're involved in so many things, normally you're stressed out, you're low on time, you are your budget is depleted, and you're not really investing your money well into something that they love. You're just doing it as kind of a season, and then by the next season they're out of that and on to something else. So we let our kids, like I said, do two activities at a time. My older son is always going to probably choose riding and parkour just because he has played baseball and soccer and just not liked it. My younger son is still trying to figure out what he really loves. He's only seven years old. He has stuck with parkour and rides just in the summer season. Um, but right now he's trying flag football and he's tried karate in the past. And that's completely fine as long as we are not continually investing in more and more activities to the point where we're running from gymnastics to swim to flag football, spending all kinds of fees on activities that they probably only wanted to do just because a friend was signing up. Sit down with your kids and see what they really want to be involved in so that you can spend and invest in their extracurricular activities wisely. So those are my five best frugal mom tips. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want more tips about how we live our day-to-day -day life on a budget, definitely hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.